and welcome to Module 4 Lecture on HIT Systems or Healthcare IT System Selection and Strategic Planning. Uh, strategic planning and system selection for uh, healthcare IT systems, whether they're electronic health records or whether they're um, other uh, RevCycle or, or other ancillaries that are involved, is pretty much the same. We're going to be going through the same processes, uh, and this would be true if we were in banking or in um, uh, any other uh, industry. Whenever you're looking at system selection, you're looking at uh, the people who are actually going to be using them as well as what kind of data is going to be going into them and what kind of data we're going to be getting out of those uh, those different systems. Now there are some things to uh, consider with uh, healthcare IT records of course uh, meaningful use and the ONC um, criteria to be a certified EMR. Now uh, that certification uh, doesn't mean anything other than it meets the minimum qualifications that uh, that the ONC has for meaningful use. However, the system still has to, the, the healthcare system still has to actually use the system uh, in a meaningful way to produce the data that they can then show meaningful use. So it's still incumbent upon the, the, the people who are purchasing the system to actually use the system. In this situation, um, there are a couple of different uh, options. First is what's called a MOTS or modifiable off the shelf. And then there's also a COTS, which is um, a, one that's not customizable. So that, uh, that diff those different systems uh, really depend upon what you're trying to do. Now, if you're not worried about too much customization, then you would use a COTS system. And that COTS system would be like a Microsoft uh, Office. Uh, you're not really going to customize Word or Excel or PowerPoint. You might be able to do a few things with the, uh, with the actual flow of the work. Uh, or the workflow, but as far as actually putting in your own uh, twist or spin on it, that's not going to be possible. But it can with a MOT system because that modified um, system allows you to make a lot more user modifications. Some of those are done in a uh, in the back end of the database. Uh, Cerner had something called Bedrock, and it was meant to be the bedrock of the system. And in there, users could tweak settings or the IT. Uh, system uh, people could tweak settings so that they would see or not see certain aspects and they could also customize a few other things as well um, uh, using the coding language uh, to, to get what they were trying to get. So those are all uh, things to, to think about. Now as far as advantages and, and disadvantages of commercial software, as I was saying the um, system selection process with the uh, off-the-shelf uh, system uh, rather than doing it yourself. There are some advantages and disadvantages to uh, those systems. And the primary advantage, of course, is that everything's pretty much built out for you. Uh, the speed to development's much uh, quicker. And of course, it's going to uh, be compliant with uh, the ONC and with meaningful use, whereas the disadvantages uh, of, uh, of doing it yourself, of, of doing your own uh, system, far outweigh the advantages. Uh, there's just uh, the uh, resources that a healthcare uh, organization has, even if it's a large one, are severely limited compared to what vendors have out on the market today. So again, this is not something that is typically recommended uh, that a uh, healthcare facility would do on its own. But when we're going through the system selection process for these uh, off-the-shelf products, uh, there's uh, quite a few things that go in uh, that, that come into play. Now, these things that come into play are very similar for, like I said, any other uh, system that are out there. So in my personal experience, uh, I never had an opportunity to uh, actually help through an electronic health record or a medical record uh, selection process. But what I did do is I was able to drive the selection process for, um, for a learning management system for Ohio Health. Uh, we had a corporate university that was starting up uh, back um, literally 15, 20 years ago. I guess it was about 15 years ago. And we chose HealthStream. And that process, what we did is, since I was in the education department, is I had to figure out what the uh, use case was, uh, who the end users were, not only the end users who were taking the exams or taking the tests, but also uh, the ones who were grading them or putting the, the learning and training together. So there were a lot of things that I needed to consider, and we probably went through about 10 or 12, uh, the RFP process, and had about 10 or 12 vendors who actually uh, responded to the RFP. You could just imagine just sitting there, you know, night after night, reading through these very dry uh, proposals, uh, all these system capabilities, and really what it came down to was 
uh, was the references. Um, and unfortunately, when you ask for references, they will give you the two or three that best exemplify what they're doing or, or what they've done. And it's very easy to have two or three really successful implementations, but it's incumbent upon you to also ask maybe who the last system was that was, uh, that was implemented. And although they may not have the, the authorization to offer them up as a reference, uh, what I found in my career is that if you call a hospital up or a healthcare organization and say, and you're geographically disparate, so you're in Washington and you're calling Ohio or you're in New York calling California, and you can say, we're considering this vendor, uh, I see that you have implemented that uh, system. Can you tell me a little bit about the process, uh, how you went through your vendor selection and uh, why you chose a vendor and how has the implementation gone? In addition to that, uh, organizations that have implemented the software a few years ago, maybe you can call them up and find out you know, how has their support been? You know, uh, has it been reasonable? And get it not just from a, a end user uh, situation or standpoint, but also from an IT perspective and maybe even from a uh, financial perspective. You know, has it been as cost effective as, as they say it was going to be? And, you know, were there cost or budget overruns? You know, what would they change? Uh, is there anything that they wish they would have known had they, uh, in, if they had the opportunity in hindsight, would they have uh, looked at things differently? So one of the most important things that I found in any kind of system selection is that is those references, are those references. Now, at the same time, they do offer, uh, these vendors do offer frequently the uh, opportunity to go and do a site visit. And that is something I highly encourage that you do. Now, the caveat with the site visit is that these again are going to be hand selected um, customers and clients of theirs who they've gone over and above and maybe even offered uh, discounts and services or even in software to be a, um, a site that they can take cl potential customers to. Uh, we had uh, in Cerner we had uh, beta sites where we would uh, do new things and, and, and odd things and then have them be a, a beta site for us where the people will come and visit them or be a reference and we would virtually give away the software for free and maybe only charge for services. And if we, they charge for services, uh, the services uh, would be uh, much reduced compared to uh, what the original price would be. And then of course we make that up when we sell to other organizations. So of course going through this process is going to be uh, is a, is a long, tedious process. Anticipate this depending upon the size of the system, the financial impact, the organizational impact uh, could be anywhere from a few months to a couple of years to go through this whole process. Once you go through this process and you've ranked your finalist, uh, the next thing when you've narrowed that uh, selection down to at least two vendors, uh, that's when probably the negotiation really starts. And it's uh, very important to negotiate with both vendors because at some point in time, your A-list vendor or your, uh, prefer your vendor of choice, and I call that a VOC, uh, would be, um, for whatever reason, might back out or there might be something that comes up that would require you to reconsider that vendor and then go with your second option. But at the same time, you need to let the vendor who's in, in first position uh, know that you're uh, the darn first position and not vendor of choice. So at least you're playing fair and ethically. Uh, some companies don't really like to do that and will completely drop out. But in my opinion, um, that if that, that's how they want to quote unquote play, uh, then more power to them. We'll, we'll go down to the next one. Uh, a lot of times the, the salesperson uh, doesn't have a lot of system knowledge and they'll bring along a, a clinical expert. And that uh, clinical subject matter expert will be the demonstration person, will also answer the uh, clinical questions. And then they might have somebody who's an IT person who will be there to answer the IT questions. But the salesperson's job is to get the, get the, the people, the audience uh, from the C-suite involved and get them to uh, push this process along to where we do uh, the site visits, where we do an on-site demonstration to where we actually do a, a site or a, um, a reference check and those things, not necessarily in that order, uh, but their job is to push that process along. That's what they get paid for uh, as salespeople. But once we've, we've got that down, uh, the next thing that we need to talk about is kind of the clinical resistance because there, there's some other factors to involved that are involved as well. 
but one of the biggest issues uh, really revolves around the resistance of the clinicians. So when we're going through this process, one of the more key things that you need to do is to kind of have that, uh, that executive, that key person executive or a, a, a physician champion, an executive champion. They, they call them different things at different organizations, but it's basically the executive who's responsible for, um, for this particular project. Now, you might be the project manager, you might be on the team, but ultimately that physician's job is to push it through the board or push it through um, at the, the high, higher level in the C-suite. So you have to have that. Now, going through the selection process, we've selected our vendor. And again, this is could be a two-year process. We also have to talk about training plans, implementation plans, timelines, uh, when things go offline versus when the new system comes online. And that really is a function of the complexity of the organization as well as the user resistance. So those are all things that we need to keep uh, in mind. And um, Glasser uh, wrote um, 10 factors for implementation success. And, uh, and these are actually very, very good. Uh, this was uh, based upon, I believe, a, a study that was put out by HIMSS, uh, Health Information Management System Society. As you're going through the HIMSS level from zero to seven, and your implementation process, these are some of the keys that, uh, that would be involved. And they're everything from um, you know, making sure that IT governance is in place, uh, some of the systems are in place so that when the systems come into, the organizational systems are in place, so when the operational systems come in, that they kind of nicely layer over it and issues can be dealt with uh, effectively and efficiently, not lead, leading to bottlenecks. Uh, who else is also involved with that? Uh, project managers. Uh, the healthcare IT staff, the, the builders, as I mentioned before, bedrock, um, things like uh, any kind of customization that might be done. That workflow analysis should be done before the vendor, uh, before actually the software is implemented so that we have a good idea of where we're going with this. So it's a smooth transition. And that's really where it's going to be key to have clinicians working with the healthcare IT department. You know, having some level of understanding what your end users are going to need so that when the implementation process is, is underway, that they're actually going to get what they expect. So the worst thing in the world is to have a system that they play with. They're like, OK, this will work well for us. And then what's delivered is something completely different. And uh, when I worked with Cerner, that was a big issue because we would have systems that were in a sandbox, if you would, uh, non-live data and people would be able to interact with it and they really liked the flow that the Cerner specialists, uh, including myself, had put together as a workflow. But when it got through the process of their own organization with all the customizations or modifications that were requested, then they got to a point where the system was almost unrecognizable. So that was a large issue that, uh, that Cerner had, at least when I worked there, you know, several years ago. And again, it's been about 13 years, well, eight years ago, I guess, eight, nine years ago. So, um, you know, talk about super users, characteristics of a team, and of course, the service management. And that's going to be really important, especially with vendors, to make sure that the uh, vendors are supplying the services and, and, the, um, uh, and the consulting that they promised. One thing that we would run into, and we would talk about frequently on the vendor side, uh, is errors that would occur uh, in the system and how serious they were and whether or not there was a patient safety impact. And one of my roles was to look at a hospital's report of an error that occurred and look at the patient safety impact and look at the impact over the entire um, customer base and decide whether or not this was an issue that was worth fixing immediately or if it was something that we could put off for a couple months and production cycle, or if it's something that would come out in the next release in six months or 12 months. So it was very important that if, if somebody came through and there was a Sentinel event, for example, is this likely to occur someplace else? How much of this error is likely to be clinician uh, driven versus our system uh, driven? And if it was our system driven, how can we fix it as soon as possible? Some of the um, more interesting conversations I had with uh, with these um, IT professionals at, when I worked at Cerner was what they called WAD. And WAD is working as designed. So we would come up with that, hey, this is an issue with this particular workflow. Uh, you push on this button and for whatever reason, X happens. 
uh, we need to have we need to look at that and they would look into the code and they go and they look at the specs uh, from from each enhancement that was requested and say well this is working as design so there is no it's it's not a, a bug it's it's a working as designed well for us being clinicians working on the floor we didn't care if it was working as designed it didn't freaking work so fix it so that was a lot of the conversations I had some heated ones uh, where um, uh, where my job was to uh, be the advocate for the clinicians for the whole Cerner user base uh, to get something done uh, by the uh, engineers even if it was working as designed or a wad uh, versus a actual bug that it still wasn't meeting the needs and how serious was it and is it something that uh, requires some immediate um, attention for that so that's kind of uh, in a nutshell for uh, our lecture today uh, over healthcare IT systems and system selection uh, please of course enjoy the, the readings um, we will be moving on to population health and cybersecurity here in the near future a couple of notes um, starting with uh, module 5 there will be no late assignments or accepted in module 5 unless you have some sort of a, a previous discussion with me so uh, please send me an email if there's something uh, wrong if you need to go to the hospital or if something is up please let me know ahead of time uh, if there's an emergency of course I'll make a um, uh, some sort of a, a uh, exception for you. Uh, the last quiz will have a one attempt maximum. Uh, I was very generous the, uh, the first two quizzes and it seems like people uh, even if they got a 43 out of 45 or you know 96 percent still wanted to take it one more time and to get that extra percent or extra two percent and quite frankly I've got better things to do. Um, if you've done very poorly on it and I say please take this again absolutely but I had people that were taking it again just because they didn't quite get that that hundred percent um, discussions those have to be in by Thursday and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and review and make sure that people are actually responding to two of their peers this replaces the brick and mortar raising your hand in class this is participation so part of participation isn't just you raising your hand it's also responding to and learning from your cohort. Uh, quite a few of you have wonderful posts that need to be read by more people. So you need to read these posts. You need to read what other people's thoughts are. You might think A and somebody else thinks B and makes a very good point. That's all part of this learning process. And if you're not going to do it, there will be a point penal, uh, penalty that's assessed. Again, I've been very lenient on these. Uh, going through to make sure that people have their grades at an appropriate time uh, so that's more than uh, more than fair but starting from here on out uh, from module 5 so module 4 you still have this uh, grace period but module 5 Thursday discussion is due Sunday the response is due uh, papers are due by Sunday quizzes are due by Sunday and unless you call me and or if you send me an email and let me know that something's wrong I'm not going to be lenient on this so anything that's not on time will be a zero so um, again please look at the module wrap-ups uh, those are very informative things that I skip or miss uh, sometimes come into play after we've gone through the module and I hit those on the backside so uh, please uh, you know look at those module reviews as well and thank you very much and have a wonderful day.